The recent massive calamities have set a new normal in terms of disasters. It's every citizen's responsibility to disaster-proof our country at all levels, from the urban landscape to the heart of our very homes. We're here today with a fellow star columnist of mine and architect and urban designer, Paolo Alcazaran, to talk about disaster proofing buildings and architecture. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Seth. Well, you know, it's a really hot topic because now yeah. not only are there all these natural hazards, of course, you have the climate, you have typhoons that we see and floods, but there's also earthquakes. So what do you think is the most important aspect? Why are there so many negative impact on the population of these natural hazards? Obvious answer is that there are a lot more Filipinos today than uh, even 20 years ago. And generally, a lot of our cities are already disaster prone. So what we need to do is really to be able to build homes and structures that are safer mm -hmm. because the expanse or the reach of uh, disasters now are more, are more widespread. The overpopulation of urban centers aggravates the pollution situation and at the same time puts more people in high-risk areas during disasters. Well, we can't help the fact that uh, the Philippines is in the ring of fire and that typhoons pass our way every year. As an urban designer, how can proper urban planning uh, help in this way? The more important thing is the context of where the structures are. Ideally, we don't build on the fault lines of earthquakes. We don't build along the rivers because of the uh, propensity for flooding. Uh, but in the reality of a developing countries such as ours, often people don't have any option uh, where they can build. The gray areas, the unseen areas, either the littoral or the riverine, the easement, the esteros, and of course in, in the context of Metro Manila, government lands that people don't see. Yes. So, because a lot of these lands are also near where the uh, livelihood is. They have no choice because they can't afford the transport to go three hours away. Architect Paolo Alcazarén even took it to social media and posted quick scribbles of somewhat outrageous innovations for disasters. Thinking out of the box, he posted different questions. What if tricycles could be converted to boats? What if we built over esteros instead of along them? What if we could power water pumps using simple padiak mechanism? Seemingly infeasible concepts that open our minds to creating solutions for disasters. Yeah, I do these little sketches, wild ideas, because uh, people are frustrated and yeah, so am I. And there are things that we see that could turn into solutions rather than problems. But a lot of these ideas, thinking out of the box, we have a lot of creative architects planners, landscape architects, often they're not given the opportunity to present these ideas uh, and uh, developers or owners sometimes don't give them that opportunity. We should enhance the opportunities for designers to uh, present creative solutions. Filipinos are very ingenious. So that being said, what can we do to, let's say, disaster-proof buildings? I mean, there's, there is a way that you can build let's say, large structures and even on smaller scale homes that are, you know, more, I guess, adapted to this environment. We really need to reset our national building code and adjust uh, the standards that we use so that we can have larger drainage or better drainage for flooding. We're one of the densest cities in the world at about 20,000 per hectare. But there's a difference between our density and, say, the density in, in New York or Singapore or Hong Kong. Our density comes at a very low rise level. We, that means informal settlements and our subdivisions are one to two stories. The point I'm making is that there's a uh, reason to go up because densities uh, can be increased with high rises. And in fact, uh, High rises are less prone to some of the damages of earthquakes and of course flooding if you're elevated from the ground. Because if you're a taller building, you sway with the, with the earthquake. And uh, efficiencies can be achieved by piling apartments or homes top of each other. There's a point at which we have to rely on, on government or larger forces to, to fix 
our infrastructure, our drainage system, uh, the metro drainage system has to be addressed. The very first thing I would do is not physical, it's not design, it's, it's governance. Uh, some say that we can't do anything because we lack political will. But the fact is, we have 17 political wills. So that's a, the it big problem. It has to be a more concentrated effort. It has to be a coordinated effort. Pollution does not stop at borders. There is not one body that oversees or coordinates all of this in terms of building. If you go to any of the 17 LGUs, the zoning ordinances are all different. The floor area ratios are also set, which by the way is all, always negotiable. So there is no uh, rational framework for development that will ensure that we're all safe, but we have to do it. Fixing the urban framework would entail a lot of work and time, but citizens may take proactive measures to disaster-proof the very structures they live in. What about um, specific measures people can take when building first tall built structures and then of course personal more homes yes. and what are the measures that we can take? It's the type of roofs that uh, now must be built is something that, that covers on all sides. So it's the four corners that slope down instead of just the, the simple roof that you see in a lot of uh, developments. That slopes down on all corners. So the safest thing to do is to double up uh, what normally you would, you would put uh, to, to hold the roof material down. Make sure it's sturdy because I'd rather you, you spend more on the roof than anything else because that's the one that keeps you dry. Finding a good architect and engineer to make sure that the building is safe could be a matter of life and death when disaster is concerned. But for already built residential structures, a little research may go a long way. In terms of flooding, you can ask people uh, around whether the street floods or the area floods. In terms of earthquakes, uh, a lot of the times you'll find people complaining about cracks in the superstructure. Uh, that's what you want to try and find out. And then in terms of uh, if it's a modern structure, you go in and inspect to see whether everything looks and feels right. If you go through the stairwell, see whether the access is free and easy to find and get out of, if, if especially if it's fire staircases. Yeah. A lot of the homeowners now are very astute. They know what's, what's low quality, they know what's high quality. And so the telltale signs would be uh, stains on the walls, um, dampness in, in, in any of the rooms. I think that's a very good tip because, you know, we can talk as much as we want about how to build a structure safely, but most of us will buy existing, uh, existing already built structures. The bottom line, reducing risk hazards is now something that every Filipino should be concerned about as disaster knows no boundaries. It's not um, a class problem anymore. It's really everybody. Yeah. It's no one, Climate no, change does not dis discriminate. No one, no one is safe, so everyone will be affected. Thank you so much for your time. I think we covered a lot. The Philippines' geographic location and climate change makes our country extremely vulnerable to all types of natural hazards, such as massive earthquakes and hard-hitting typhoons. This ultimately raises the question, how can we possibly disaster-proof ourselves?